Hey, I'm reloading some 38 Special. I have some wad cutters that I use for practice. And uh, the first step is to remove the primer from the spent cartridge. And you just run it through the press and a little pin that sticks out here and that's going to pop out the old primer and then while I'm doing this I'll talk about what I've discovered to be less expensive or or what I'm doing to reload my target rounds with my 38 and this would apply for 44 44 magnum you know other straight cartridge types where I you know, I've already tumbled this, so it's nice and shiny and clean. Um, what I found is I just plop a drop of uh, Turbo Bright into the tumbling media, and it just really brings them out to life, uh, shines them all up. If you're kind of you know, like real shiny brass. Otherwise, just clean is good enough just to run them through the tumbler and get them clean. So the first thing you want to do is pop out the primer. It just pops right out. Then what I used to, I never used to do this, um, but now I clean the uh, primer pocket. I just have this primer pocket tool and you just run it there a few times and uh, just all nice and clean and it just just takes a second. I do that now and like I said I never used to do that before but now I have the time and and these are even just target loads. I mean I don't even care. I, this is for volume not or anything else and practice my double action pull and you know just to throw some lead down range and so I remove the primer and clean the primer pocket and then I'll seat the primer I'll show you that all right now we're gonna do some priming so let's see how that goes first I need to orient the primers and the way I'm gonna do that put them in this tray and it has ridges on it and those ridges will flip the primer because uh, like this cartridge here one side is uh, squared off and the other side is round and so this the uh, round side will stay up and the squared off side will catch the ridge and flip it over so we just kind of give it a shake until they're flipped over Close the gate, put it in the priming tool, and we'll open it up. There's a primer in there, and you just put your primer in there, just one right after another. Make sure it's uh, flush, seated, and you can begin your priming. Hopefully I stayed in camera because I was looking at my hands and not the viewer so well I've got a bunch of these to do so anyway I just feel them with my finger and continue on all right and then I check all of my primers to make sure they're all seated and in order uh, I use a reloading tray uh, and I do it in what's called a batch system, which means I do one thing at a time, and I do them all. And I find that's the best quality control for me. Uh, a flip primer or a primer that's not seated firmly will stick out 
so I'm looking really for a difference not for uniformity and so that now I know they're all primed also I know they're not belled yet and the reason I know that is because it wouldn't fit in this particular slot if it was so uh, when I do open it up to accept the bullet it uh, it'll stick up in the tray it won't fit in there so I know that this one's ready for powder and it's been belled whereas this one has not it fits in there real nice they're all nice and level so that's how I do my quality control and I'll talk about powder later the next die will expand the shell a little bit I only like to expand it just barely enough to get the bullet started no matter which kind I'm using uh, I really don't like to do that too much it's it's exercised enough from being crimped in and then expanded out when the bullet is fired but I lose so few cases it's not even funny so uh, even exercising it it usually just stretches and I trim it off and yeah I just I rarely get a cracked cartridge I, so anyway, I just flare it out just enough to get the bullet started. For my uh, practice rounds, I use a double-ended wad cutter. So it's just pretty much just a solid 148 grains, sized and lubed for 38, 357. I get mine from Rimrock Bullets, rimrockbullets.net. So they're a very good company to deal with. They have excellent customer service. Best prices I've seen so far on the internet and local. So with good customer service and good prices, I highly recommend them. And again, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just a customer. So until I start casting my own bullets, which I really don't ever plan on doing, uh, I highly recommend them. They have uh, all kinds of pistol sizes, 380, 9mm uh, weights and size uh, shapes. Uh, they also have uh, 45 automatic, 45 of course, you know, pistols and uh, 44 if you shoot 44 Magnum, 44 Special in your rifle. Uh, all kinds of uh, lead sizes available. I highly recommend them. I've developed a technique to determine case length without measuring each one of them. And what I do is I will flare it. And like I said previously, just enough to get the bullet started. So I'm expecting to see just a very small flare. And of course, I'll feel it when I put it back into my reloading tray. So if it flares too much, I'll really notice it because it, it just opens up very wide. It's, it's painfully obvious, especially compared to all the other ones. It'll stick out, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for one that sticks out. And in that case, it's too long. So what I'll do is I'll remove the decapping pin, resize it, and measure it and see where it's at to, uh, and trim it down if necessary. Uh, I rarely find them too short because uh, if they're too short to begin with I have so much 38 brass that I'll toss it. If it's a 357 I'll trim it down to 38 uh, or something like that but for the most part I have so much brass in 38 that I don't even worry about it uh, for the short ones. I have, when I, when I just started out and had very few pieces, uh, would uh, adjust the crimp for that particular individual, but I, I don't go to that trouble anymore. So as long as uh, I, I see and feel the flare, again, if it's too short, uh, there'll be no flare there and the bullet won't start into it. So let's say... Um, now I haven't flared this one, but let's say I, I tried and the bullet just won't go in. Uh, 
uh, it'll just barely start. I'll know that's too short. So, um, the, I'll probably discover that when there's a charge in it. And uh, again, that's no big deal because uh, you know I'll just I'll just deal that when I come across it. If I if I miss it, if I, if I thought I felt it and put it back, and actually I missed it, then I'll discover it then. That'll be my second safety net to determine if the shell's too short. And that's how I handle that for all my practice rounds. I'm not doing anything painfully precise. You know, I'm not shooting 4,000 yards with, uh, you know, my rifle where every shell has to be, you know, identical and perfect. So this is just, uh, you know, plunking stuff. Uh, actually, it's pretty good. This particular recipe that I have uh, makes both myself and my wife look really good at the range, so, so we like it. So now they're all flared out and we're ready for powder. I have this electronic scale which is pretty cool because you can uh, program it. We're going to do a 38 special with a bullet weight of 148 and the powder we're going to use is 700x and the weight is displayed and then it counts that's what I like about it it counts and that way I can know if I've uh, gotten off track or not now digital versus analog they're traditional scales you know I'm not going to go into that right now I also have one of those and I like it um, but I like this guy too all right, the way I determine my bullet overall length, and uh, well, in this case in particular, let's talk about this, is um, I want the crimp to be right in the uh, groove of the bullet. So I know my length is either at the correct true length or five mils over. I know this just because of the flare and experience, my flare sizing technique that I talked about earlier. And I want that crimp, when it's rolled, to capture the bullet right there in the groove. So I've determined that, in this case, it's 1.25 inches. And I've checked in my reloading manuals, and it's above the minimum and below the maximum, so I'm good to go. And I'll just uh, set up my die appropriately so that it seats the bullet and crimps it when it's at 1.25 inches. To prevent double charges, uh, which wouldn't be bad in this case, it might be a little bit of surprise at the range, uh, triple charge might be bad in this case. I'm using such little, such a small quantity of powder. Um, that a double charge is possible. Uh, so the way I prevent that is when the charge has been weighed out, I will put it in to the shell and I will immediately place a bullet onto the case and depending on how I'm going, uh, my batch technique says that I'll do them all like this before I start sizing them and since I don't have my sizing die set up I've only set it up for the crimp not the length I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, charge and start the bullets alright so once you have your seating depth set um, You'll check and make sure that uh, the crimp is in the groove, preferably in the center or so. And then you can check your overall measurement. Uh, it's pretty close. It's within a mil. As long as you're between your min and your max, uh, you know, for wad cutters and target practicing and stuff, it's not going to matter a hill of beans a mil or two, even plus or minus five, actually. You know, if you're swinging the you're swinging the scale, you know, plus or minus five. Oops, 
you know, just, just anywhere around your target is fine. And as long as you're consistent. And uh, don't worry if you waste a few uh, over and under shooting for exactness, you know. You can use those to start off with and then uh, really concentrate on the other bullets that have uh, been loaded to your dimensions that you prefer. Now with rifle, you know, that's a different story with, uh, you know, if you're doing high power rifle, you want to you want to know a lot more about your gun and your breech and your head space and all that other good stuff. But, you know, for revolvers, uh, you, you have quite a bit of play and freedom. So, uh, you know, just, just enjoy.